Mr. President, thank you for the opportunity to make this adjustment or make a recommendation for adjustment in our schedule. Uh, because we are moving so quickly, uh, our committee brings the recommendation that we advance the schedule of our program by 10 minutes. All in favor of advancing the program by 10 minutes, please raise your ballots. Uh, you may lower them. All opposed? Amen. Program has been advanced by 10 minutes. Thank you very much. At this time, uh, we've done something this year, uh, Committee on Order of Business. We're having uh, three, three theme interpretations of uh, the theme this year, and our verse first interpretation will be that on prayer. It will be Pastor Eddie Bumpers of the Crossway Baptist Church of Springfield, Missouri. Pastor? Thank you, Mr. President. I'm honored to be here this morning. I'm going to be reading a verse from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, a verse very familiar with us this morning. The scripture says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. We're gathered here this morning as God's people, called by His name, Southern Baptist. And I think we're all aware this morning that we stand in need of a revival, a fresh move of God in our convention, in our churches, in our life. I think as much as any time in church history, we need that fresh touch of God, revival. Revival, of course, is that special work of God among His people where God sets our hearts on fire for Him afresh and anew. A time when revival takes place, the outcome of revival will be love, unity, and fellowship in the church and a real burden for evangelism and missions outside the church. We know this morning that we are living in a land that is sin sick and we need spiritual healing. And I hope that we all believe that God is able to restore and revive. We stand in a time when I believe that there's a great opportunity to reach people with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. So the question in my mind is why are we not seeing more accomplished? I think somehow we have allowed our flesh to convince us that our plans, our programs, our buildings, and our budgets can reach this generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and clearly they cannot. What we need today, only God can do. We need revival. And for revival to come, we must pray. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. I will move and revival will come. There are two challenges from this verse I want to share this morning with you quickly. The first challenge, I believe, is we're to commit to the priority of prayer. Prior, prior, prayer is to be a priority. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. God calls upon his people to be people of prayer. One of the first things that Solomon did when he built the temple was to pray. God said, my house is to be a house of prayer for all nations. Prayer is to be a priority in our churches. But for prayer to be a priority in our churches, prayer must be a priority in our life as men and women of God. In Acts chapter 6, when the deacons were chosen, we're told they were chosen to serve the church, that the pastor might be free to pray and to minister the Word of God. When the disciples looked at the life of the Lord Jesus, they saw the power and effectiveness of the life and ministry of Jesus. They said, Lord teach us how to pray. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 2 verse 1, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. First in priority, first in importance was to be prayer in the life of the church. When we pray, we're saying, God, I depend upon you. God, I need your wisdom and your power, and nothing will be accomplished unless you move in my life and through my life. Prayers to your spiritual life, what breathing is to your physical life, you ain't going to last long without it. Someone said prayer can do anything that God can do, and God can do anything. One of the privileges of our life as a Christian is a privilege of prayer, to be able to go to the great God of this universe and talk to Him, to share our burdens with Him, to con confess our sins and to praise Him and to intercede for others, a privilege that's bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 19 says, having therefore, brethren, boldness 
to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, prayer must be a priority. If it's going to be a priority in my life and your life, then we must set aside an appointment, a time that we set aside to spend with God. We must make it a priority in our church that we're going to have a time set aside to pray. And then I believe we must live in an atmosphere of prayer. Paul said, pray without ceasing. Prayer is the key to revival. In verse 13 of this uh, Second Chronicles 7 passage, God said to Solomon, when I shut up the heaven and there's no rain, or I command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people will pray. Today, we need prayer because we're living in a time of spiritual dryness in many places. The locusts of lust and immorality and materialism is eating up our homes. And the plague of sin is destroying our country. What do we do when this condition exists? God says we pray. When we look around and see the landscape of our country spiritually, we should look up to God in prayer. We need a burden, a fresh burden to pray. Someone said, my burden is, I don't have a burden. We need a burden to pray that would drive us to our knees to cry out to God in prayer. And we're told what kind of prayer this is to be. It's to be a prayer that we pray humbly. He said, if we'll humble ourselves, that is to bow our heart before God. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. How should we pray? Humbly. How should we pray? Earnestly. He says, seek my face. That is to be serious and to be desperate. Friend, we are living in desperate times. This is no time for Polly want a cracker kind of prayers. We need to be desperate and cry out to God. The idea is to ask and to desire and to beg. The Bible says in the book of James that Elijah was a man of like passions like we are, and he prayed earnestly, and the heavens were shut up. And he prayed again earnestly, and the heavens were open. Earnest prayer, serious prayer for God to move in our lives, in our ministry, in our churches. When Peter was in the prison in Acts chapter 12, we're told that the church, and the church prayed without ceasing unto God for him, and God heard that church's prayer and set Peter free. We should pray humbly. We should pray earnestly, and then we should pray holy. Turn from your wicked ways. The idea is repentance, to turn, to change direction. Paul told Timothy, pray lifting up holy hands. James says, the prayer of a righteous man avails much. Isaiah said, God's ear is not deaf that he cannot hear, hear. His arm's not short that he cannot save. But our sin has separated us from our God. If revival and restoration is to come, we must pray humbly, earnestly, and holy with clean hands. We are fooling ourselves. We think we can pray and touch heaven with sin in our life. First of all, we're challenged to commit to the priority of prayer. Second, we're challenged to claim the promises of prayer. We're told when we pray that God will hear from heaven and will forgive our sins and will heal our land. I'm thankful that we pray we have the promise that our God will hear us. You know, just that promise alone should motivate us to make prayer a priority in our life. Three times we're told in those verses that God will hear. I will hear. When you pray humbly and earnestly and holy, I will hear from heaven. And he says heaven will be open. Think about that. No longer will heaven be closed, but heaven will be open and the showers of God's blessings will fall on us. There's nothing worse than a closed heaven. And there's nothing better than an open heaven. When the rain of refreshing revival falls in our lives and our churches, God said, I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins and heal your land. Do you believe that's possible? Do you believe in your life and your church and ministry is possible for God to hear and to forgive and to heal and to work and sin revival? I believe it's possible. Our God is not walking on crutches. Our God is not riding a wheelchair. Our God is powerful and able to move from heaven and sin revival. The leak between our weakness and God's power is prayer. Every great revival in church history and in the Word of God took place in prayer. In Nehemiah's day, a man of prayer. The city of Nineveh, Jonah was a man of prayer. The book of Acts, every great move of God in the book of Acts took place because of prayer. Restoration and revival through prayer. Dr. Adrian Rogers said this, and I'm finished. He said, for many Christians, the most 
failure in their life is a failure to pray. There is no sin in your life that proper prayer could not avoid. And there is no need in your life that proper prayer could not supply. Nothing lies outside the reach of prayer except that which lies outside the will of God. What fools we are when we do not learn to pray. God help us to be people of prayer that we might experience restoration and revival. Thank you so much, Pastor Bumpus.